Welcome to the old Lumens channel again, where old guys mess up perfectly good, perfectly good parts. Uh, today I'm going to put the emitter on the heat sink, and I've drilled a couple of holes in the heat sink already for the wires to come up through. Uh, I've actually had a third hole, one of my drill bits, the first one I tried, uh, snapped about halfway through the aluminum. Uh, so now I have three holes, but I managed to get the other two, and I'm going to put the uh, emitter on the uh, heat sink, and I'm going to use Arctic Silver, or Arctic Alumina. Uh, it's an Arctic Silver product. I uh, just happen to have Arctic Alumina. If I had Arctic Silver, I might use that. Seeing as how the emitter is on a star, I don't have to worry about having uh, contact electrically so I could use Arctic Silver but like I say I have them and I'm going to use it. One thing about these that, that uh, my opinion from doing a lot of computers over the years I see an awful lot of, of people gobbing this stuff on to make sure it's make contact. That's the wrong way. Um, any kind of components when you have to when you have to put two together and you have a heat transfer, the correct way really is solder. That that's the best contact there is. Uh, the next best idea is this stuff. But it's still it, it's still the film of this product, even though it, it, it thermally conducts, it's still an isolator. Okay, so you want a super thin layer. You want to just barely have enough to do the job because it's going to isolate as well as thermally conduct. So the, the thicker the layer, the more isolation you have and the less thermal conduction you have. Okay? So I'm going to try to put a super thin layer in this. I have some Arctic uh, aluminum mixed up and I better get after it before it starts to harden on me. Okay? So, you can't, I'm just, all I'm doing is putting a little tiny bit on and then we'll come back to the camera. Yeah, I'm still working on spreading this. I haven't gone anymore. Still spreading, still spreading. Haven't gone anywhere yet. Okay. If you can see by the camera, I've uh, I've put a layer on here. It's uh, it's probably a little too thick, uh, but I'm going to spread it between the two pieces and try to thin it out. So I'm going to set my piece back down, and I'm going to put this back on. You gotta wipe hands all the time with this stuff because it gets everywhere. So, and I don't really, really want it on the emitter itself, or that would be a bad thing. So now I have it on there, and I'm going to just start working it, working it all around to try to thin the layer out and try to get a decent contact. Okay. Try to push it down as much as I can. Make sure everything's got contact. And then try to make sure that uh, my wire holes are going to work. And try to center the emitter as much as I can. So it works.
Okay, that's probably about it. Once that hardens up, I'll be adding a little more Arctic Alumina uh, along the edges of the emitter and, uh, and then I can run my wires. All right, well, I've got uh, I've got the heat sink and the emitter sitting here in the vise, and I've got a couple of wires that I'm going to hook up. Um, I'm using a fairly thin wire because with the uh, with the emitter on that star, it's not going to sit very high, and with the reflector I have, there's not a lot of room, so. With those issues, I'm going to have to use a smaller wire to uh, try to keep the height down where I can I can still use the reflector and get some kind of a halfway decent beam. Um, what I probably should have done was buy just a bare emitter, and then I could have uh, built a small uh, a small copper uh, pedestal for it uh, and soldered it to that, and then put it on the uh, on the heat sink, but hey, you know that's that's how you learn. You know, I mean, the the, uh, the reflector is uh, uh, shallow and wide, so uh, the base is, is pretty big around, and so I'm going to have to solder uh, and then put uh, Arctic alumina over top uh, to keep from having a contact. So I'm going to go ahead and th this is a Teflon coated uh, pretend uh, wire. It's probably about 26 gauge. It, I should have heavier wire, but like I say, this is what I'm going to have to do. I flattened it out, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to hit it and see if I can't get it to solder real quick with the solder that's already there. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. So I do have a little bit of solder here in case I need to touch some to it. Let's see if that takes care of it. I love doing these little tiny wires. <laughs> can't hardly see it and can't hardly hold it in place. Alright, let's put a little more solder on there. I hate to use a lot, but these can be trying. Okay. Alright, that one's in place. One more to go. One more to go. I got some side around here, so I'll just try that. Guess I'll flow a little more. See if that did. Turn that off. Looks like that'll do it. I'm going to have to uh, clean that them solder points off a little bit. 
and uh, I think it's a winner. Okay, what I ended up having to do <clears throat> was to enlarge the opening in the reflector so that it would fit uh, around the entire star because it needed to go deeper. So once I did that, then I found that the beam was real ringy because it was too the uh, reflector was too low. So I had to make a copper shim to lift the reflector back up to where it's about even with that star. And now I got a pretty decent beam. I mean, it's not perfect. I could probably shim a couple more thou uh, to get it perfect, but as it is right now, it looks pretty good. There's no real bad ring. There's a little tiny bit of a dark spot in the center. Um, it's got a, a pretty good flood, so I'm just going to leave it for that. And uh, next thing will be doing the circuit board.